In today's video, we're going to talk about capturing motion with your camera. So we're going to use motion to help accentuate um, or make our compositions more interesting um, by creating the illusion of time. But first, we need to start with some vocab. So we need to review shutter, the thing that blocks light from hitting the film uh, or your sensor. Um, the timing that we use on that, the longer it's open, the more motion it will show. The less time it's open, the less motion it'll show. Uh, you want to be shooting in shutter priority for this because trying to set everything manually may drive you a little bit crazy. So I'd start off with shutter priority, then you can worry about going to manual later if you want to. The first type of motion that we're going to talk about is frozen. And as the word frozen suggests, everything in the picture is going to be clear. Okay, background, your subject, everything, there's no blur to anything. And this is going to require a substantially high shutter speed. You really want to be doing this outside on a sunny day, if you can, or a bright cloudy day um, where you can get shutter speeds. The rule of thumb is generally like uh, 250th of a second or faster should be able to freeze your motion. Um, but the higher you can get that shutter speed, uh, the easier it's going to be. So in this image of my dog, Teresa, getting ready to fetch her Kong that was just thrown in the creek, um, you can see as I zoom in here that her ears are frozen. Um, obviously, a dog can't stand like that. Her tags are up in the air. You can see the water droplets frozen as they're coming off of her hind end. Um, you can also see in the creek behind her uh, that the water that's running fairly heavy there is um, frozen uh, as well. So the goal here is to get everything um, still in the image. Uh, in this one, my wife and I were whale watching, so we're taking a picture of the whale, and he slapped the water, and you can see um, not only the rainbow and the little spots um, or little droplets of water there, but you can see where the splash is. That water is in the middle of moving, um, but it, there's no blur to anything. And again, if you zoom in on that, you can see that a little bit better. Even the wake, so the bottom right corner, um, the whale is swimming to the top left corner. Um, you can see even in the wake of the, the whale breaching there, uh, that's all frozen as well. Uh, in this image, you can see the flag is unfurled, um, and it's in the middle of a move. But uh, you can see the corners of the flag are curled like they're getting ready to buck the other way. And then, of course, can't have a slideshow without my niece in it. Um, she was splashing in her little pool, and it ended up uh, hitting her in the face, which would annoy her. Um, so I would just kept taking pictures of her playing. Um, she was having tons of fun with that. This one is actually a cheat. We look at this one in photo one, and I address it in photo one. But just to readdress it, I'm cheating here because I have a flash. Okay. Um, and so when you look at this, I can tell that I have the flash here because the, the shadows of the leaves are almost directly behind the leaves. You notice that there's not a lot of value um, in the dog. Um, I mean, there's some shiny parts of her coat, but there's not a ton of value there. Um, and when you look at, you know, my wife, there's not as much um, shadow on there because the light's coming from straight ahead. So yes, I could use the flash to freeze my motion, but that's cheating, and I really don't want you guys using flash. The second type of motion we need to talk about is select motion, and these are playing with ways of capturing motion where part of the area that you're selecting on purpose is blurred. There's going to be two ways that we go about doing this. Um, the, the first is just letting something move through your image, keep your camera still. The other one is having your camera follow the motion, which is a little more difficult. Um, so we'll talk about that here in a sec. Um, but basically with select motion, either part of your subject or the background um, or parts of both are blurred. This requires lower shutter speeds. So if you're doing this on a sunny day, you're really going to need to set that ISO to like 100. And then you're going to really have to play with, you're going to need you know, a really high um, aperture number. Um, to get a slower shutter speed. This may be something that's a little bit easier to take at dusk um, so that you don't need, you need your camera not to be going quite as fast. Um, so sorry about that, that just sort of jumped. 
So in this photograph here, we have a photograph of Mr. McClure driving his Suburban around the flagpole. And you can see, if you look at the background, the middle school up on the hill is perfectly clear. The trees in the, for uh, in the background right there and then the grass in the foreground are clear. But as he's driving through, you can see that the car is blurred. And if I zoom in on that, you can see that the blur is a little bit more. Um, that's actually what you're seeing is as the shutter opened, the car was in one position and it keeps going. So if you look at like the, the front bumper or the left side of the image there, um, you can actually see where the car started and then the blur, the ghost image is actually where it was traveling before the shutter um, shut again. So that's select motion there. Um, in this image, if you look at the chipmunk's front paw, um, he is actually trying to wrench. He thinks I have a peanut. It's actually my finger, and he's trying to wrench the peanut out of my hand. So you can see his little front paw. And if you sort of look at his rear end, his rear end's blurry because he's twisting um, to try and get this peanut out of my hand. So again, if we go a little bit closer, you can see that a little bit better. Again, back to Teresa playing in the water here. She's shaking. Uh, off the water, you can see her paws are completely still. The Kong is actually frozen, except for the knot at the end of the handle. And then, of course, her ears um, are blurred because they're moving so fast. What's neat about this picture, though, is you still do have some frozen motion with the water that's being shaken off, um, being frozen. But her head's moving so fast, it can't freeze that motion. Anything that moves can work. This is actually water, and if you slow the shutter speed on water down, you can actually make the water look more like a silk um, sheet. Um, so here you can see, um, especially right where the cinder blocks are in the front of the picture, you can see the water moving. There's a blur to it there. So water can be something that's fun to play around with um, with those. So the second type of uh, select motion that I'm going to have you guys play with is a technique called panning. This may make you insane, um, but you need to try and get this because you can get some really neat images. This is going to take um, some trial and error. You may have to have somebody on a bike or something um, that you can play around with this. It may take you several images to get this one. Um, so here we are back with Mr. McClure um, driving his Suburban around the flagpole. And what I'm doing is uh, following the car. Um, so I'll show you this in class so that you get a better idea of what I'm actually doing as a photographer. But if you look at the hood of the Suburban, it's pretty clear, right? Um, but when you look at the wheels, you can tell that they're turning. And when you look at the background, the, black, the background is blurred. Um, and what's happening is I'm following the front edge of that car with my camera. I hit the button and keep following it um, as it's taking the picture. And the general idea is this should be freezing my subject and blurring the background. This can show a lot of speed. Um, what you're going to run into, you can see here, the, the Suburban isn't quite as in focus, but I can still tell it's Mr. McClure. Um, but you can definitely see in the tires, the rotation in the tires there, and of course the blur in the background. So panning is going to take some trial and error. If you're not getting a ton of blur in the background, it means your subject needs to be moving faster. Um, and it, it's just a trick of you have to keep playing until you get this photograph to work. So technical review really quick. Make sure you know how to set your camera to shutter priority. Uh, make sure that you're, you know how to make the adjustments to your shutter speed and shutter priority mode. Um, if you're going to photograph in manual, obviously you would need to know how to adjust your aperture and all of that. But again, I would stick to shutter priority because it will make your life easier. So for the shooting assignment, um, for motion. You're going to continue thinking about lighting and all of that, um, but now you're going to really focus on using motion uh, as a way to make your subjects more interesting. You need to take a minimum of 24. I can guarantee you if you're doing this right, you're going to take a lot more than 24 because you're just going to be playing. And this is one of those cases um, you're not, you don't want to throw anything out because you never know what you have. Um, but don't go hog wild either on the same uh, token. Uh, no images from the class activity um, that you started out with can count towards this, so I don't want to see stuff from here at school. Um, you want to think about composition. You can crop. Composition may be easier to deal with when you crop in the computer rather than trying to get it right in the camera. 
especially if you have, you know, a dog that's moving really fast, you probably need to give yourself some space for the dog to run. Um, so you may crop later, which is fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you want to think about that strong single light source. That is really going to help you when you're trying to freeze the motion. Otherwise, you may not have as much dramatic lighting, um, but that's okay because the motion is going to help with that drama. You may crop on this one. Again, you can try and compose as much as you can in the camera, um, but you may have to rely a lot more heavily on cropping in the computer to get your composition right. Um, you guys can look at the rubric. I have it attached or should have it attached if I don't remind me. Um, and basically out of your 24 minimum exposures, you're giving me two strong examples of frozen motion. So not only are they strong examples of the actual freezing of motion, but they're good co uh, compositions as well. Same thing with select motion. Now I want you to give me two that part of your subject are blurred, and then you need to have a minimum of one image as an example of panning. You could technically have three really good pannings that you use for select motion um, and the panning, uh, but most of the time people get like one panning if they're lucky. Um, so that's why we're only going to require one of those. Otherwise, you can look over the rubric, uh, and if you have any questions on what I'm looking for um, or what you need to do, let me know.